Wakey Wakey! Wakey, Wakey. Wakey. Hello! Hello. Good, good morning, morning. Oh, and welcome to Wakey, your little slice of ridiculous designed to get you up on the right side of the bed. Hi, I'm Deborah Coughlin and I am the founder and CEO of Wakey, which is an app that you can go and download now from the App Store. It's um, It basically helps wake you up in the morning with entertaining content that will also help you work on your mental health. So, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. First of all, I want to share my story um, with all these amazing women who are gonna blow this industry apart and this industry being the tech industry, an industry I never expected to be involved in. I didn't really understand or know anything about and uh, certainly never thought that I would be here um, as the CEO of a company that is working in tech. It's mad, never expected it. So what have I been doing? For the past 20 years, I've been working across the creative industries and media. So um, I started off in work experience at NME after doing an artsy degree. Then I worked at some production companies, I worked at a design agency. I mean, there were lots of other jobs as well, like working in a call center. It wasn't all just um, exciting job, too exciting job. Um, I was in bands, I started a feminist punk choir, um, did musicals, operas, uh, started magazines, wrote a book, did all kinds of different things. And this was all very exciting and amazing and I'm really pleased to have had the opportunity to do these things. But then I was working at the BBC and I heard about this incubator. Didn't even really know what an incubator was. Um, an incubator called Zinc. And Zinc is really interesting because it is a tech incubator where people are coming together and wanting to create big ambitious unicorn type businesses. But also it has a mission. And the mission was to, yeah, build a big business that ha can have a hundred million users but solve one of the developed world's biggest problems at the same time. So before I explain what problem I went to solve I just want to say I never thought I would get on the tech incubator. <laughs> I applied for it anyway but I did assume that all the people who would get on it had would have MBAs or PhDs and there were lots of people with MBAs and PhDs but it really helped having a creative person like me in the mix. So they asked me to join. And not only was it good to have me in the mix, I went through the entire process and ended up as part of their portfolio, which is awesome. <laughs> um, so what is the developed world's biggest problem that I focused on? It's mental health, because it's really been something that has affected me personally in my 20s particularly it was a really difficult time for me um it's really affected my family and friends and also it's just the most fundamental thing if you can help somebody with their mental health you're affecting their chances of having a job that is satisfying for them their chances of having happy and healthy relationships their chances of um having healthy body as well as a healthy mind so it's it's kind of a route to solving lots of problems so um, I began to look at, um, do research, and I discovered there were a couple of issues. So one thing is that most of the apps out there are developed for the same kind of people, which are top 10% of earners, type A kind of people, um, very ambitious, working in the city. Um, and you can see it, because you can see it, how they're marketed, the stories, the values, um, um, the names even, the typefaces even, you can see what what the, what the kind of people these brands are for. Really people at the kind of higher end of the socio-economic tree. And I just thought that wasn't fair. And I thought there's a massive gap um, for people like my family and friends and myself who don't feel attracted to those kind of products. And also I found out that there was an engagement problem so that is where people just find it hard to engage with mental health products and services over a long time. And there's loads of different reasons for that. Some of it's accessibility and attractiveness. Some of it's because it seems like work and it seems like something you fill in at a doctor's. So I decided to take the approach that Sesame Street took with education, which is turn it into entertainment. And that's what Wakey does. So Wakey is an entertainment platform 
that will help you with your mental health. And we've started with a breakfast show where you will be woken up by Chris Taylor of Love Island fame and our brilliant drag queen, um, Ginger Johnson, plus Dr. Ian Jordan, our clinical psychiatrist from Oxford University. And by the clever power of our producer director, Luke, you're gonna see some clips of Wakey. I'd love to know what you think. Please get in touch. Um, do download the app and um, yeah, enjoy it. So here is a little taste of Wakey and what you can expect if you download the app. Thank you for having me and have an awesome event and um, hope to see you soon. On today's show, we're gonna be talking about self-soothing. Keep your mind out of the gutter. I've never understood baths really. I don't know why you would want to sit and stew in your own filth. Not all of us are that filthy to be fair, Ginge. I have a good time. <laughs> so I took all my clothes off I was standing there in my wife fronts and I was watching I was watching the show and someone told me afterwards that the place where I chose to stand was in full view of the entire audience. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think, Ginger, if you didn't have a chin, how difficult would it be to fold towels? No, and I don't ever think that. Okay. I can say that with confidence. That's but I, don't, I don't ever think that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, eyes down for a full house. It's a uh, coping strategy bingo. Here we go. Get your dollars out. Food. Oh, I've got one right off the bat. You've got one already? This is rigged. There's grannies everywhere. They can be furious about this. So, opportunity mindset. What is it? Do we have it? And if not, where can I get it? Can I get it on the internet? So you can download it from my website, uh, Dr. Ian. <laughs> <laughs> and then Louise has said this corker and she says, this is my tiddly pup Sam. He's a proper gentleman, total flirt, and loves the ladies. And he's got a shirt and tie on. <laughs> he's ready for work. He's a barkitect. A barkitect. <laughs> Well, I like the juxtaposition of the uh, the black and white versus the, the red. Chris, I think you found your forte as an art critic here. Yeah. <laughs> I've never met anybody so full of hot air. <laughs> when, when we're feeling sad or overwhelmed or, you know, even hopeless, it can feel like we're just completely inside of our problem. And this week is all about developing the habit of finding a way to get outside the problem a little bit and get a different perspective on it. I've, I've often thought that to myself in the past, like when, you know, doubting things perhaps, and you just think, Do you know what? I'm not dead yet, I'm still here, and every decision I've made in my life has come to this point, so why am I doubting mm -hmm. myself now? When we're stressed and overwhelmed, we tend to ruminate and worry more, and rumination and worry is the key way that people develop depression and anxiety problems. We all have very different experiences to each other and you want to try and relate to people sometimes and that can lead to generalizing. But like most things in life, generalizing becomes a problem when we do it too much. What I tend to do is when I've got an issue, I just I just try and forget about it and get a good night's sleep. And normally I like to think the, the old subconscious just comes in and does all, all the hard work. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Again, like oh. I, I'm going, I'm becoming come totally redundant, Chris. So please yeah. stop. Sorry, mate. Becoming yeah. so good. I have got a psychology degree. Do you want me to dial it back a bit? Yeah, dial it back a bit, maybe. Okay. And I'll, 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 I'll take my top off next week, and you can do the psychology. <laughs> What's the best soap? Coronation Street or Imperial Leather? <laughs> Coronation Street. What, ce what celebrity gets on your nerves? Oh, Donald Trump. <laughs> Where would we find you at the party? Uh, tequila. Where would you find you at the party tequila? <laughs> Jordy Shaw or I'm a celeb? I'm a celeb! <laughs> <laughs> so what would be in your de-stress kit, Chris? Juggling balls. A yo-yo. Right. A bouncy ball. <laughs> And, and like, Zac Efron. Hang on, hang on. You don't, this is a briefcase of its own right now. <laughs> and finally, Alison Falani, a name that I've not yet pronounced correctly, says, Poor rearrange Alison. my crystals or blast some Bon Jovi. Make sure you don't mix those up and rearrange your Bon Jovi and blast your crystals. <laughs>